Hey guys, thanks for uh, thanks for having me today. It's just a, a, a great audience. I was uh, talking before to uh, Jennifer, I believe, and just the energy in here is great. I do an awful lot of these, as you can imagine, and it's pretty rare that I see this this kind of buzz going on. So you know, so feel uh, feel proud of that. So we're talking about thinking big but acting bigger. That's so a couldn't be a better topic because I tell you, I've been fortunate to have owned a ton of businesses, but the thing is, you know, and hired a lot of people. And people always say, I got this great idea, I got this great thing, I got this, I got this. And my response always to anybody that worked for anybody I was hiring is, how are you gonna do it? How are you gonna make it happen? And that's the big thing, it's about action, it's about tactics, about, about making things happen. You know, I, uh, um, let me tell you a couple stories here about, uh, about these businesses that I've owned. Two of them are the most memorable. I've been fortunate to sell a bunch of them, which is, which is awesome. But there's two that come to mind. The first was uh, my very, very first one, my very first sale. The company was a, a snowplow company, right? It was, uh, I'm a Chicago guy, like most of us are, and in the winters, it used to be you get out there and you shovel them. You know, you're out there, your parents are like, you know, get outside, go. So we're out there shoveling, I'm with my, my, my buddy Jeff, and we're shoveling driveways. We go, we go, and we got like, you know, 15 driveways. At the end of the day, we were completely dead. So it was about, I don't know, at the end of this probably four week, heavy snow period, Jeff looks at me and goes, I'm out. <laughs> you know, I look at him and said, I'm out too, we're dead. Dead, dead tired. So I was at my, my other friend Rocco's house down the street and, and I was there for dinner and I'm talking to his dad and his dad owned a big landscaping architecture company and some of the things he did in the off season was he did shovel driveways with, you know, with tractors and, and, uh, and trucks. So what I did, instead of just saying, forget it, you know, I went and I had these little contracts that the, that the people signed for, for pawing the drivers, I sold them. I sold it to this guy. My first sell I ever had, it was 48 bucks. I was 10 years old, and it, it was the most amazing sale ever. I, was, I felt like I scored a touchdown in the Super Bowl. Got on my bike, bolted to the store, and bought $48 worth of football cards immediately. And I'm like, man, this is for me. And I remember this to this, you know, to this day because it had such an impact on me. Later on, I started a company called a Sampling Corporation of America, and it was a marketing company. We did marketing tactics, and this is after a few other companies and a few failures and a few bust-out companies along the way. But this was a great idea, and we did target marketing, and, and, and the business has grown. But it was a time at the beginning where I had big visions. I was really young in my young 20s, so it was, you know, five, six years ago. And I had, um, you know, so, so, but I had this idea, I had this vision. I saw myself big, you know. I mean, I just as a little kid, I used to make these like lists of things I want to accomplish and what I want to do, and they were all big visions. Of course, back then I had no idea how the hell I was going to do any of it, but it's something I wanted to do. I pictured myself with this in this life and these in this thing. So I started this company, Sampling Corporation of America, and 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 prior to this, I had some. You know, so I don't know, but not, not your regular road to success. I kicked out of college for some stupid fraternity thing. After my second year, went on to, to a different college and graduated and went on to grad school and everything kind of clicked for me there. But as I started, I didn't have any money. I mean, look, look at us right now in this economy. We're in a pretty big, you know, cash crunch and there's not a lot of businesses that are flush with capital to go ahead and do kinds of things. But it's the same for me, except I, I had nothing. So I remember very clearly times that I would go and I would, my accounts were uh, packaged goods companies. So I was out there, you know, the Procter and Gamble's, the Lever Brothers, the Hershey's, the General Foods and General Mills of the world. And so I would go out there and I would go to New Jersey on the New Jersey Turnpike. And I'd fly in there and I'd rent the car and I'd, I'd see all these companies and they were all down the Turnpike. There's like four of them. But the problem is I didn't have any money. Right? I had a limited amount of money. So what I ended up doing is I rented a car, four door car, splurged for that. But instead of staying in a nice Hyatt, I just crashed in the back of the car, in the parking lot of the Hyatt. So I could get up and use they had these great restrooms to clean up and you know get ready and everything like that. And it's funny because I look back on that and you know it's like you know I wasn't like some homeless guy or anything like that, you know, at all. I had a nice family and everything, but for me it was about priorities. It was about what do you want to spend your money on? Do I want to spend the money in the hotel room or do I want to take a client out? Well I want to take a client out because I wanted I wanted to get big. You know, I wanted to succeed at what at my, at what my vision was. And I was driven like crazy. I mean, no question about it. And it's funny because you know, I think about all these ways and working with a lot of young people right now, you know, things that they're doing and, and, you know, and, and about how, how, how difficult it is for lack of cash and you know, they're not happy that I have not much sympathy for them. <laughs> but um, because there's many things you can do. 
but you know, I think of these things. I think of the times where I used to, I used to um, park at the uh, O'Hare Regency High. We all know where that is. And I'd park in the back and I'd duck through the lobby so I could get on the shuttle bus because I didn't have the 20 bucks for parking. All these things added up. I remember a time, too, that, um, that one of my, my first business trip, my first one overseas, not overseas, the first one out of the country, was in New York City. Actually, it was the first time I was ever there. Growing up, I had never gone, you know, been away much. I was in New York City, and I remember getting up there. I had my portfolio of stuff, and, and I had an appointment because I had to justify going. So I was with a guy from Lever Brothers, and this is one of the most important lessons that I learned. It was really a great one. So I'm working with, I'm talking to this guy at Lever Brothers, and he's talking on the phone, and my business is starting out, and he's like, yes, yeah, Steve, come on down here. I'm really interested in what you guys have to offer, what you're selling. I'm like, great. And I, you know, business was starting out. I was so pumped, and anyone would return my call even, actually. So I went out there and I met him, and this guy is like, you know, excited to do it. He goes, you know, let's go out for lunch, you know, and we'll go and we'll, you can tell me what you got going. And he said, I'm pumped about that. Oh, well, great, a business lunch in New York City. How awesome. We'll go to Smith and Walensky there and on Park Avenue. And I don't know how many of you have been there, but in, in New York City, Smith and Walensky Park Avenue is not cheap, especially when you're sleeping in your car. So I go there and we sit down, and he's telling me about, about how he's interested in, the, in, in, the, in what we're doing in my services. We did product sampling. Like the little things, the little shampoos and little stuff you get in, in the mail. And he was at Lever Brothers, he was a brand manager, so he did that kind of thing. So he's telling me how much, you know, he loves what we have going and he loves our programs. And, and while he's telling me this, by the way, this guy's eating like he's going to the electric chair tomorrow. I couldn't believe it. I mean, you know, tap money with one hand and then shoveling it in with the other. It was amazing. Impressive, too. And I'm, I'm just in my head, you know, back when I was like, wow, this context is great, but I, hear, I keep hearing cash registers ringing. You know, it's every time this guy orders. But then he says those magic words, Steve, send me a contract. I'm like, oh, great. And now I'm ordering stuff, you know, cigars, whatever, it doesn't matter. You know, it's, it's back when you're drinking lunch and you're drinking during your lunches. You know, stagger back to his office afterwards, and it was great. I call my office, I'm like, let's get that contract ready and overnight it to him. So we Federal Express it to him. He has it, and this was on a Monday. So I wanted to play cool, I didn't call him Tuesday, but Wednesday I sure did, because you know, I wanted to just make sure we were getting this thing back. Call there, ask the guy, is Glenn there? Glenn doesn't work here anymore. <laughs> no, his last day was Monday. I'm like, are you kidding me? I was Glenn's goodbye party, right? This lunch was his, fa his farewell thing. And it's funny because I look back on it, this has a great happy ending, by the way, so, but, but I, I look back on it, and I'm like, you know what? For 200 bucks, that was one of the best lessons I ever learned. One is, it's not easy. You know, and this is like kicking a guy when he's down to do you know, what this guy did. You know, it isn't easy, but you gotta work through it because there's gonna be bumps in the road that, you know, along the way. And the other thing is that, that be careful what you do when you're out there in this world because things come back to you. Years later, when my life was very different, I had probably, I don't know, 3,000 employees in 35 countries at that time. Our buildings were huge, and life was good. I, one of my, one of the guy had many people running businesses for me and all that, and different things. One guy comes in, I was really in town, I was traveling internationally a lot, and the guy goes, Steve, you know what? We're, you know, we're going, you know, we're hiring this one, we're hiring for this position. You're in here, do you mind taking a look at this, you know, at this guy for me? And I, I, I didn't do any of the hiring really at that time, but I'm like, fine, the guy gives me the resume, who was it? You know who it was. The same guy. I'm like, I, the guy thought so little of me. He didn't even remember my name or company or anything like that. So it was, it was just very interesting, you know, that, uh, that the things that we do now on our quest for success, on our quest to be big, come back. Sometimes they come out to bite us in the ass. Sometimes, you know, sometimes they benefit us. So always keep that, you know, in mind as you're doing the things that you're doing.